Sean with Face Down here, and I am with one of the members of Protest the Hero, and you are? I am Rody Walker. And what do you do in the band, Rody? I do the singing. Excellent. Now, um, when you guys first started out back in 1999, uh, your band name was called Happy Go Lucky. Uh, <laughs> Why did you guys decide to change it to Protest the Hero? Well, uh, beyond the obvious reason that it's a very ridiculous name, um, we were apparently involved in a lawsuit by some other like major major label artist that had also had that name, so we're actually very thankful. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we just we changed the name. We were I think we were like 12 or 13 at the time now, so um, wasn't really any skin off our backs. Excellent. Now, um, how hard has it been keeping your original fan line up? I mean, uh, a lot of bands go through so many members, and you guys managed to keep pretty much your exact line up. To be honest with you, it wasn't that difficult. Um, you know, I think a lot of bands start by, you know, searching the internet or putting things up at music shops, being like, oh, we're looking for a bassist. You know, we we started as friends. Like I've known these guys all my life. Um, so I don't know. Hopefully, we'll end as friends as well because I don't think we'd be the same band uh, with any member changes. Now, did you guys expect your video, Heretic and uh, Killers, to gain such popularity, especially on MTV2 and Fuse? <laughs> and who came up with the idea behind that video? Uh, yeah, that, the idea came from the director. His name's Mark Riccadelli. Um, he shot our first, first video, and he told us about the concept on that video shoot. And we were just like, that's ridiculous. I hope that never happens. And unfortunately, it did. <laughs> um, but no, it's a great video. I, I love it. I'm very fond of it. Uh, how obscure it is. Um, I, I don't know why it was so successful, because I don't know, I, I thought it was quite peculiar. <laughs> now, uh, can you give us uh, and your fans some insight on your current album, Skrillis? Is that how it's called? Skrillis. And uh, which was just released here in March of this year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's our newest album. <laughs> um, you know, it took us about a year and a half to write. Um, in relation to what's different about it, I think, um, you know, I took over lyrics for the first time in our career, um, so that's certainly um, something very different. Uh, also, uh, I think the rhythm section found found their own on the record, as opposed to just following the guitars through the gratuity that they maintain. Um, you know, they sat back into their own patterns and rhythms and melodies, as opposed to just following the guitars. Now, why the gap, uh, the, the time gap between the two albums, Fortress, uh, which was released back in 2008, and your current album? Um, you know, I know there's a lot of bands that can really churn them out really quickly, but we're just, we're just not one of them. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, we went on the road for two years. We had a lot of problems. Um, we had a really, uh, I, I don't want to say poor team working behind us, but a really disorganized team working behind us. So we went home and we kind of restructured everything. Um, and the, the album took a long time to write, to be honest. You know, it, it took over a year and a half to write and record and get ready. So when you account for those two years that we spent on the road touring the last album, it's like, there you go, you got about three and a half years between records. So. Um, now, is there any interesting facts about Protest the Hero that you'd like to share with us and your fans that no one else knows? Um, I don't, I don't know that uh, <laughs> there's any like secrets that no one knows, or at least that I'm willing to divulge. But uh, there's certainly some peculiar things about us, uh, specifically uh, a certain affinity for Star Trek. Um, yeah, I, I think it's pretty obvious. Uh, there's, there's a lot of like strange references on all of our records to Star Trek and the fandom that is some that will probably never be uncovered. <laughs> Excellent. Now, uh, what's the story behind your current video, which is on your current album, C.S. La Vie? Ah, C'est La Vie? Yeah. <laughs> I like how you made it kind of Spanish. In Canada, they teach French. In the States, they teach Spanish. Um, but C'est La Vie... Um, En français means such is life. Um, the song itself is about the futility of suicide. Um, so the video is really attempting to, uh, you know, graphically display that. Um, unfortunately, um, at least in Canada, it got denied from a lot of uh, major television music programs, um, which is fine because you know mostly it's just reruns of The Hills anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, apparently. 
they couldn't stand behind it because it was glorifying suicide. Truthfully, I think it was probably just because it didn't have a kid's help phone number on the end of it. Nice. Now, how did it come about uh, getting your songs on video games like all the Guitar Hero games, the NHL 07, 2K9, and 09? That's a good question. One that I would very much like to know the answer to, because I'd love to be on more video games, because when they do that, first of all, they give you a good chunk of change, and then they give you free games. You know, so... <laughs> I, I would love to get on more video games. It seems, um... I, I don't want to say easy, but um, most probable to get on uh, hockey soundtracks for us, because, you know, it's like, it's our national pastime, so um, they seem to kind of be looking for Canadian musicians to be part of the soundtracks. Now, um, any crazier uh, fan t or tour stories that stick out in your mind, um, and do you have any pre-show rituals? Um, but other than, you know, the obligatory alcohol consumption, um, there's there's no real pre-show rituals. Um, we're not we're not religious people, so we don't pray. Um, we're not, uh, you know, we're we're not superstitious in any way. Um, if a show's going to go poorly, it's going to go poorly, and no, like, silly little thing you do beforehand is going to stop it from doing so, and vice versa. If it's going to go well, it's going to go well. Yeah. And uh, what's the future for Protest to Hero? We know that you just got a new album out, the, the new video, um, any other tours, side projects, what can your fans expect? Um, Arf, the bass player, and myself are currently working on something, uh, like a little side project which most people probably won't enjoy because it's within the old country genre. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're, uh, we're going to spend the summer in, um, in Europe doing the festival circuit. Uh, then we're going to go do some Canadian stuff. And we'll probably be back in the States. Um, I don't know. We're going to spend the next two years on the road and then get back to the studio. Uh, it'll probably be another three or four years. You should probably try to book a show with uh, one of our Canadian friends, uh, Cancer Bat, since it has a pretty awesome... I know those boys. Yeah, I know those boys well. What's Thank up, you. Liam? Yeah, how you doing, <laughs> Liam? <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, Rowdy from the uh, protest, is, protest the Hero, if I can speak properly. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, definitely check them out. Uh, this guy's definitely kicked some major ass. Uh, face down is out. <laughs>